<laughs> Hi, we are the Moms of Furries. I'm Carrie. Hi, I'm Joelle. Thanks for stopping in to our podcast today. Um, we've had some really exciting things happening. We have. So in case you haven't seen it, there was recently an article in insider.com that it talked really, it was kind of a response to Joe Rogan made some comments. There was, a, there was some swirl going around about the furry fandom and about having litter boxes in schools. So <laughs> a journalist reached out to us and asked if we wanted to to talk a little bit about the fandom. And we said, sure. Yeah, fair talk to her. And I think it came out on December 5th, so very recently. And we've got really nothing but positive feedback. I haven't seen anything negative. I will say that this was all very new to the, the journalist that wrote the article, Allison, and she was super respectful. She was very kind. It was a pleasure to speak with her. But obviously, you can't learn everything about a fandom in one conversation. Right. There, there were things that maybe we didn't say as clearly as we could have or just things that weren't recorded. But that's nothing negative on her. I, I loved that she was super open. I think she learned from it. Maybe she has a different perspective. Not that she's had anything negative to say, but maybe newfound understanding of the, right. the fandom and really the motivation for being a part of the fandom. I mean, we all know that the fandom typically only gets negative or sensational press. So to have a nice positive article out there or any form of media has been well received. We had talked about, you know, announcing that it was coming up before it was published. And I'm glad that we didn't because I feel like everybody would have been preparing themselves emotionally to have this negative thing happen and where they, you know, people feel like they have to defend themselves or whatever. And, if they're known. Yeah, and you were nervous them. about it, to be honest. I was I, was. I was a little more meh, like, oh, people have wanted to do articles. Uh, we've been approached to be on TV talk shows before. And so I, I, I was a little bit more meh. But I think Joelle was nervous that there, there would be backlash. Yeah, just because you never know how people are going to react to something. And we did not get to see the article before it was published. So we had no idea what the actual angle of the article was going to be. Um, Allison let us know she was proud of it and, and gave us a lot of reason to feel that it was going to be a positive perspective. But, you know, until you read it, you have no idea what it's going to say. So, yeah, I was nervous. Yeah, well, and I want to say to Joelle's credit, when Allison first reached out to us, Joelle's immediate response was, we're not going to participate if it's anything negative about the fandom. We only shed it in a positive light. And I, I loved that. It was strong. I'm very proud of us. We're, I feel like we are honest about things that happen in the fandom. I think that we're very open about it. We talk about how the fandom is sex positive. We're open about that. I mean, obviously, that's not something that's going to be appropriate for young furries. And we make sure to teach people how to be safe and what to look out for and things like that. But we are open to discussing what's going on in the fandom. But sometimes, you know, the uniqueness of the fandom makes people want to make it this sensational thing instead of what we have experienced is just fun and silly and you know it's just a good time and not to say that we aren't aware we've said this a million times there are adult aspects yeah. of the fandom like there are with any well, fandom that's why the princess leia gold bikini is so popular so you can sexualize any interest we have gone as moms of furries to anime conventions and there are all kinds of adult content and people find that kid friendly so Yes, I agree. And it's the thing that we keep going back to, that the fandom can be largely a safe place for kids. Wherever you are with, with children, you need to be aware of your surroundings. But I think that we were happy. Allison's article was respectful. Do I wish it was a little more meaty? Sure. We gave a lot of information, and I didn't even think that we gave half of what we Well, this have. might be a shock, but um, we tend to blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. No. Do we? I don't know. I was, yeah, I was surprised that she didn't use some of the things that we said, but I feel like this was an introduction into it. Maybe she was a little concerned about the backlash as Or a maybe those things didn't seem vital for what her message was, which is fair. That's totally fine. It's her article, right? Now, we have been approached by other people to be able to get out there and do some more things. And I'm going to say our springboard, but that's not really what I mean. It just led to some more people seeing us and and wanting us to be part of their projects. Yes. So we may have 
opportunity yet to blah, 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 blah. Well, and that ha- <laughs> tends to happen once somebody gets a, like a little peak of interest. And what I like, and I'm sure you were going there, is that this has brought us more parents than typically. It helps that yep. it was written by an adult for an adult audience. Yeah, we've had more parents reach out to us since the article than we have the five and a half years before, or actually almost six years. We've been doing this almost six years that from January. Crazy. I know. And just in these last couple of weeks since that article, actually the last week since the article has been written, wow, it seems like longer than that. We've had more parents reach out than ever before. So I have, and I, I hope it continues. I do too. At, well, you know, but listeners may want to know we're actually kind of noodling how to move forward do we keep moms of phrase as we as it is do we adapt and, and do something different grow it in a different way we're just really trying to figure out what we do from this point forward but here's what i would like i would like to see us bring the young virtual space to more cons not because i want to go to more cons i do but because i really like what that lends to conventions that space for kids and the opportunity for adults to connect not just with us we're happy to talk to to parents and grown-ups all the time but for them to connect with each other and start forming those bonds to feel Mm -hmm. okay in the quote-unquote weirdness of the fandom i really agree with you and we love cons but to be honest we spend our time like almost every bit of our time in the Young Fairy Chill space. So it's not like you said, just because we want to go to cons, we just would like to share that experience with more people. And honestly, we've had so many parents say, are you going to come here? Are you going to come here? Are you going to come here? And we're not, you know, we know that the, the desire to have that space in different conventions is there, but it's just financially How do we figure out how to do that? We would love to figure out how Moms of Furries could be our day job because it's something that we both feel very passionately about. I mean, maybe we'll figure it out. Maybe we won't and we'll still do what we can do for the fandom and it'll be great no matter what. You know, your point is super valid because... We, when we are at a, a convention with the Young Furry Chill Space, we're in the Young Furry Chill Space. And when we are at a convention just enjoying it, we do. So there's, it's it's two, just two separate things. We can't really do both. Like, for instance, the dance competitions. We yeah. really like going to dance competitions. But when we're in the Young Furry Chill Space, we have started projecting that inside our chill space for two reasons. One, it's hard to get in. It's sometimes those those dance competitions yeah. are just too packed. And because they're too packed, it's option two. It's overwhelming. So it's nice to have yep. a, a more subdued space for the young furries to enjoy the dance competition. Mm-hmm. That being said, we're, that doesn't allow us to go to the dance competition ourselves. Happy to do it. It's not a sacrifice, but it's just the different experience we have when we go to a con versus when we're young furry chill spacing a con. Every convention we go through and look at the panels and we're like, oh, wish we could do that. Wish we could do that. There are always ones that we try to have volunteers cover our space and go to. And those are the ones that are um, directed for parents or young furry specifically. And normally either the panelists themselves or the convention staff They've asked us to be part of it just because it's our thing. That's where we are in the fandom. That's our role within the fandom, supporting the fandom. But there have been a lot that we just haven't been able to attend. And there are a lot of interesting people out there that put on these panels and give really cool informations. And we like to host a panel, too. Mm-hmm. Um, when we, Again, when we have a Young for a Chill space, we don't host a panel. But if it's just us going, we then try. we can host a panel and talk about our experience. And at Anthro Northwest, we do try to participate in other yeah. panels. Taff Otter gives a great That's panel. Fantastic. And we like, to, we like to participate in that. Not that we, we don't have any part of the planning. We like to participate as guests, <laughs> right. I should say. <laughs> well, um... Taff owns that. Yeah, process. yeah, yeah. We just go and support and enjoy. You know, I'd love, I would love to do our Don't Be Scared, Be Aware. I would love to do that as a panel every time. For- oh, live and in person? Yeah, I would love it because be and I'd like to have it as a recording too, because I'm sure we would get fantastic questions. And maybe one day we can do that. I love that idea. We didn't need to sort that out later. But we have also volunteered in other capacities. Do you remember being at the t-shirt booth for... FC, we did that. Yes, I would not mind volunteering again. That was great fun. 
I think the most important thing that we really want to convey today is that we're thankful to Allison for approaching us and writing this article. It was brave of her because it's hard for mainstream folks to approach a, a strange subject. I think that I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I'm very proud of what she wrote and very proud of what we've done with the fandom. And I, I can't wait to see how it evolves. Hey, if you guys haven't seen it, if you just Google insider.com moms of furries, that article will come up. And you know, last night um, at dinner, we happened to be talking about the fandom, my husband and, and one of my kids and me. And I said, well, have you read the article? And he said, no, he hadn't. And he Googled it, pulled it right up on his phone and read it while we were at the table. That was really cool. It was, it was a proud moment for me. I was really proud of us. We don't always take the credit that I think maybe we sometimes deserve. And it's hard to say you're proud of yourself, but I am proud of us as well. I think that we work really hard with what we do with Moms of Furries. And we did it on, a, it was a lark. Like we just, we're going to do one video and then it's turned into this, it's this thing that we do. Uh, Joelle was going to make us do one video. <laughs> All right, whatever. whatever. Joelle says, let's do stuff a lot. That's so Joelle. Um, but we did. And I feel really, really proud. Cannot express how proud I am of our Young Furry Chill space. Well, and it's not just the Young Furry Chill space, although I completely agree. It's the opportunity that it affords us to connect with people and have people share their stories, which are so meaningful. And it's such an honor and a privilege that they feel comfortable. I was just chatting with someone talking to us about their project uh, this weekend. And that's why I said, you know, it is a place where things happen and really big things. We've experienced really big life things happen in our space. So I am too very grateful for being someone that people will confide in and let us be part of their story. I appreciate that so much. But I also love our actual chill space because what we have done, we've taken all of the experiences that we've gone through, good, bad, just a lot. And we have included things within our space that some people may not think about, but they are important and they're important to some people. For instance, our headphones, noise canceling headphones, people may not think much about it, but that's important to a lot of our, our attendees. And I feel like we've had comments on that so many times because nobody expects them to be there, but we've pulled from our experience a life experience as mothers, as people. I don't know. I like our space just as much as I like what it affords us as far as stories and people. I'm just proud of it. Agree, agree, agree. And every, every, um, every convention leaves us in tears and exhausted. <laughs> Emotionally and physically exhausted. And that's how you know <laughs> you've done a con right. Okay. I have a question for those listening. Where would you want us to go? Like if we could put two more cons in 2023 schedule for the foreseeable future, we will be at Anthro Northwest. We will endeavor to, to do that no, no matter what. Right. We will always do our best to be there. It looks like we're probably going to be in Atlanta. No announcements have been made, but we're hoping to be. Sure hope so. Yeah. But those are the only ones that we've really gotten to any kind of stage where we could say, yeah, we probably will be. I'd like to get back to FC as a fun one. And it's our first, so I feel like we should, should go back. Someone did ask us about uh, Motor City. And that, with that being an 18 plus con, there's not really a space for us there as far as our Young Free Chill space. We'll see. But anyway, I'm just wondering who our listeners or where our listeners really think that we should go. <laughs> we said it on uh, social media. It's too bad that we can't find some kind of sponsor. We would just get a camper van and drive around and do presentations like everywhere. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> As my dream. I know. It's cool. It'd be awesome. Could you imagine taking like a mobile Young Free Chill space or setting up in different places? It'd be awesome. Would be amazing. Would be amazing. I think we should wrap up for today. We definitely want to thank you for listening to us. And if there is specific content you'd like from us, please share that with us because we're definitely open to ideas and we want to 
learn and share as we go. We have some upcoming episodes that will be back to educating and informing people. But we wanted to take a minute and just be proud of ourselves and the fandom. And to be able to say, hey, there's something positive out there in the media about the fandoms. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks again. Check out our website, mofurries.com. We have a coffee and PayPal if you want to help us get places and bring Unyoung for Space stuff to different conventions. Thank you. Take care. Bye.